Hello game makers! Welcome back to ILTP WC, the channel that teaches you everything you ever needed to know about game development. In today's episode, we are kickstarting your game development journey with Unity 3D. In just three minutes, we will create our first game. This is where the legend begins, right? Let's start the clock and let's go! Your journey starts here and now with installing a game engine. In our case, it's Unity 3D, a powerful user-friendly engine used by professionals and hobbyists alike. Just go to their website and download the personal edition of Unity, which is free and install it to your system. Let's dive right into the interface. Here we have the scene view, our canvas for designing the game world. We also have the game view, a handy tool to see what our game will look like when we play it. Before we go further, we need to talk about game objects. Game objects are a basic building block in Unity. They can be anything, from character, props or even the environment. We are going to create an endless runner game, so our first game object will be the runner itself. But we don't want our runner to be a boring old cube, right? So let's bring in assets. Assets are files that we can use to enhance our game objects. They can be anything, textures, 3D models, audio files, you name it. We are using some assets bought from the Unity Asset Store, a treasure trove of resources for your games. Now that we have our runner, it's time to make him run. We do that with a script, which is a piece of code that gives functionality to our game object. Scripts in Unity are typically written in C-sharp, a powerful programming language. Let's have a quick look at what such a script might look like. There's our class called runner, that inherits from mono behavior, Unity's base class for almost all Unity functionalities. The speed variable will determine how fast our runner moves. In the update method, which is called once per frame, we calculate the distance the runner should move move in this frame. The time dot delta time gives the past time since the last frame, which makes the movement smooth and frame rate independent. Finally, transform dot translate is used to move the runner along the z axis. We are going to attach the script to our runner and our character starts running through the scene. Running is cool, but jumping is even cooler. Let's add some more functionality to our script to allow our runner to jump. We'll listen for player input and if the player hits the spacebar, we'll add an upward force. But our wanna needs something solid to run on, right? We'll create a level object, assign it a platform asset and position it just right. So our wanna has a path to run and jump on. Now the stage is set for an endless running game. Our game is taking shape now, but let's take it to another level. We'll introduce a skybox, which is a backdrop that helps to create a more immersive environment. It wraps around the entire scene, gives the players the impression of being in a bigger world. Let's add some shader effects for that extra visual pieces. Shaders allows us to create impressive visual effects by manipulating how the game light interacts with the surface of our game object. Unity's shader graph tools allow us to build our own shaders visually. From cell shader to holographic effects, the possibilities are endless. Now press the play button and just like that we have got a simple endless runner game all made in Unity in just 3 minutes. And this is just the start of your game development journey. Unity offers so many features to enhance your games. Keep exploring, keep experimenting and most importantly keep playing with computers. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of ILTP WC. If you like the content, please smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and if you have feedback, just write it down in the comment section. Thanks a lot and goodbye.